Now that we're talking about stars, we need to get some definitions down. The first term we need is luminosity. Luminosity is how much energy the star is actually radiating. So luminosity is the amount of energy actually being given off. Apparent brightness, or simply brightness, is how much that energy we receive at the Earth. Or in other words, the brightness is what it appears, how much we get. Okay, so uh, for me, what has kind of solidified these ideas is thinking about light bulbs. Okay, now, I'm from an older time, which means when I think light bulbs, I think watts. Okay, the time was uh, you'd go to the store and to figure out how bright a light or how much light a light bulb would get off, you would look at the watts. Okay, so for example, a 60 watt light bulb is something you'd want in kind of a dimly lit area. Not super dim, you could still see by a 60, but it, it wasn't tons and tons of light. 75 is kind of the normal standard bulb, and then 100 is something, a 100 watt bulb is something you'd want in a, real, in a place you needed lots of light. So for example, a bathroom or around a vanity to make sure you can really see everything in good detail. Okay, so this wattage is actually the luminosity. How much energy are those bulbs giving off? A 60 watt bulb is less luminous than a 100 watt bulb. Okay, so that is luminosity. Now, thinking back to the 100 watt bulb, okay, those bulbs are really, really bright. Again, we put those things, I should actually say, they're really, really luminous. Okay, we put those in places we need lots and lots of light. But if we take that very luminous bulb, and we put it far away, say several miles away, are we going to really be able to read by it anymore? And the answer is of course not. It's so far away, we receive very little of that energy. Okay, so that is the brightness. Even though it's still the same luminosity, whether it's close or far away, okay, its luminosity hasn't changed, it's still a 100 watt bulb, but its apparent brightness has changed. It's very, very bright when it's close up, and it is not nearly as bright when it's really, really far away. Okay, so luminosity is what it gives off, and it doesn't matter how far away it is. Brightness is how much of that light we see, and that is going to be related to the distance. So as the light is traveling away from a star, we know that it's going to get less bright. It's actually going to, we can actually create a formulation. The brightness is equal to the luminosity divided by 4 pi the distance squared. L is how much light it's giving off, but then all of that light is spreading out as the surface area of a sphere. That's the 4 pi the distance squared. What this means is that we actually get a natural drop off. If you double the distance, if the distance is twice as much, then the distance squared is 4, but it's in the denominator. What this means is that the brightness is going to be 1 fourth as much. If we go 4 times the distance, then it's going to be 4 squared, which is 16. So the brightness is going to be 1 16th as bright. This leads us to our first clicker question. If a star is 3 times more distance, its brightness will be A, half as bright, B, 1 third as bright, C, 1 ninth as bright, or D, 3 times brighter. Go ahead and think about it, and we'll discuss in just a bit. Alright, if it's three times, then the brightness is equal to the luminosity divided by 4 pi the distance squared. So the distance is now three times greater, so 3 squared is 9, but it's 1 over that. So it's going to be 1 ninth. The correct answer is C. Now we can rearrange this. Okay, so brightness is actually very easy to measure. The way that we measure brightness is we look at the star. Remember, brightness is the energy we receive. Now, we're actually more scientific than just looking at it, although we'll mention in a little bit that time was we did just look. However, now we actually take a picture, and then from that picture we measure the amount of energy, and that tells us the brightness. So determining brightness isn't that bad. Okay? And for these billion stars that are close enough, we actually already know the distance by using the parallax. So, what this means is the thing we don't know is the luminosity. So we can rearrange the formula so that the luminosity is equal to the brightness times 4 pi the distance squared. Okay, so in this way, if we know brightness and distance, we can figure out luminosity. 
Now again, we're going to be seeing a lot of equations. You don't have to memorize the equations, but I do want you to remember the relationships. Okay, so as we have a greater brightness and a, a um, larger distance, the luminosity is going to increase. Okay, that sort of thing. That's what I want you to be able to remember. Well, using this, being able to figure out the luminosity of stars, we've actually been able to figure out the luminosity of all of the stars within our solar neighborhood. Okay, the, I kind of define the solar neighborhood as these stars that are close enough to us that we've been able to figure out their distances with, through parallax. Well, from this, we create the luminosity function. Okay, that sounds really fancy, but it's actually not that bad. Okay, so on this graph, this shows the luminosity function. Up and down, we have the number of stars. And then along the bottom, we have the luminosity. Okay, so notice, though, that on the left, we have high luminosity. And on the right, we have low luminosity. Okay, so up and down, we have the luminosity of stars. And then we go from very, very luminous to not as luminous. Okay, well, as we look at this, we kind of see the spread, the possibility of stars. We see that there are luminosities that range from 10 to the negative 4th, it's actually closer to 10 to the negative 6th solar luminosity, out to 10 to the positive 6th. And if you remember back when we were talking about scientific notation, 10 to the 6th is 1 million 10 to the negative 6th is 1 millionth. Okay, so what this means is that there are some stars out there that put out as much energy as 1 million suns. It would take 1 million suns altogether to put out as much energy as just one of these stars. On the other hand, there are other stars that would take 1 million of those stars to put out as much energy as our sun. So there's a lot of spread. Now, the uh, really quick, something I want to point out, we're going to occasionally see things like L and then the circle with a dot in it, or L with a subscript solar. That means of the sun. Okay, so L solar is the luminosity of the sun. We're going to see M solar, which is the mass of the sun, R solar, which is the radius of the sun. We have all of these things that we're comparing back to the sun. The reason why? We know the most about the sun. It's the easiest to compare back to. Also, in a lot of these things, the sun is actually kind of an average star. For example, with the luminosity, it's about middle of the road. So the sun is actually very useful too. Now, the Greek astronomer Hipparchus was actually the first to try and classify stars based off of their apparent brightness. So remember, brightness is how they the apparent brightness is how they appear to our eyes. What he did is he went out one night, one clear, dark night, and the very brightest stars he could see, he labeled those number one stars. Then the stars that weren't quite as bright, he labeled those number two stars. Then the ones not as bright as that were number three, and he went down to number six, so that the category six stars were the stars that you could just barely see. If they were any fainter, you wouldn't actually be able to see them anymore. Hey, okay, well, we actually still use this system. It's known as the magnitude scale to help us classify the brightness of stars. Now, something I want to point out. Remember, number one is the very brightest stars, and number six were the very faintest stars. What this means is that the larger the number is, the fainter the star is becomes. In other words, the magnitude system is backwards from the way we normally want to think about things. Usually we say the larger the number, the brighter the object. Not the case with magnitude. Okay, so be careful, it's inverse. Now again, we still use this system today, although we have standardized it and extended it. Okay, but to give you a little bit of a feel for some of these apparent magnitudes, okay, we've got this nice scale. Okay, so the sun has an apparent magnitude of negative 26.7. Now remember, the sun is the brightest thing in our sky, but its magnitude is a negative 26.7. Okay, so again, it's backwards. The full moon is at negative 12.6. 
Venus, at its very brightest, is negative 4.4, and the brightest star in the sky is at negative 1.4. There's the naked eye limit at plus 6. What this means is if there's something with a magnitude greater than 6, so 6 or larger, you're not going to be able to see it with your eye. 6 is that limit. Okay, the uh, Pluto is at a plus 15. So does... Uh, so can we see Pluto with our eyes? Absolutely not. Not even close. The Hubble Space Telescope has a limit of a plus 30. Okay, you can see really, really faint things in that case. Now, that is apparent magnitude. We've also adapted the magnitude to the luminosity of the star. So remember, apparent magnitude is like brightness. Absolute magnitude is like luminosity. In this case, what we do is we say, what would the brightness of this star be if it was moved to 10 parsecs away? In other words, we take away the effects of the distance, which means now we're only worrying about the luminosity. So, apparent magnitude is the magnitude the star would have if it was at 10 parsecs. Okay? The apparent magnitude is the actual uh, brightness that of what we see. Okay? So, absolute magnitude is like luminosity. Apparent magnitude is like brightness. So, in this table, we're looking at the absolute magnitude and the apparent magnitude for three different stars. So, on the left, we're looking at the absolute magnitude of the sun, of the brightest star in the sky other than the sun, Sirius, and of the bright star, Betelgeuse. On the right, we have the apparent magnitude of the sun, Sirius, and Betelgeuse. Okay, so, looking at the absolute magnitude, which of these has the greatest luminosity? Of all of these, Betelgeuse at a negative 5.6 is going to have the greatest luminosity. Now, which one has the greatest brightness? Okay, looking at these numbers, by far, the sun has the greatest brightness. Again, remember, it's backwards. So, negative numbers actually are brighter and more luminous than positive numbers. I realize, I'm sorry, it still trips me up to this day. But that's the way this works. Here is our second lecture quiz question. Based on the comparison of the absolute and the apparent magnitude, which star is the farthest away? A, the Sun, B, Sirius, or C, Betelgeuse? Go ahead and think about it, and we'll discuss in just a bit. All right, so let's go through this. So remember that absolute magnitude is like luminosity, so it's the energy the star is actually giving off. The apparent brightness, or the apparent magnitude, is like the apparent brightness, or just brightness. This is the amount of that light we actually receive. So looking at the sun, it has an absolute of 4.8. So if it was actually 10 parsecs away from the Earth, it would appear as a 4.8 magnitude star. Now, its actual apparent brightness, what we really see because of, of its distance, is a negative 26. In other words, it appears way, way brighter than what it should, meaning that it's going to have to be super, super close to us. Okay, then, looking at Sirius, it has an absolute magnitude of 1.4, but an apparent magnitude of 1.46. So again, it is brighter, the apparent brightness is greater than it would be if it was 10 parsecs away, meaning that it has to be closer to us. Now, Betelgeuse, on the other hand, has an absolute magnitude of negative 5.6, meaning it has a very high luminosity, but its apparent brightness is a 0.5, meaning it's much lower than the luminosity. So that means it's going to have to be farther away. It has to be a greater distance to get a fainter brightness. So, which star is the farthest? The correct answer is C, Betelgeuse.